Hi folks, thanks for tuning in and welcome back. I am back from the Tomahawk. I'm back from South Africa where I was on a safari for a couple of weeks and it is good to be back in the United States. I can't wait to download these videos and share them with you. And we had a wonderful time there. I want to thank all my new friends overseas for being so kind to us. So a nice shout out to all the South Africans. Thank you so much for your hospitality. And I also want to thank all my new friends from the United States. We met some great hunters in South Africa and they were from Minnesota and Wisconsin and North Dakota, Texas and Pennsylvania. We shared a lot of funny stories. We shared a lot of great meals and we certainly shared a lot of alcohol. So cheers. Thank you so much for the stories. Thank you for the memories and I certainly appreciate your friendship. So I wanted to just do a brief overview of what you can expect going forward with uh, the videos that I'm going to be putting together. I'm actually going to be downloading them on my computer, taking them off the GoPro and as well as this camera here. I did, I did film a little bit with this camera. But I'm having some lunch here and kind of sitting back and I just wanted to briefly talk about the flight, the drive to the camp, the accommodations, the people and the hunters, the weather, the vegetation and the terrain, insects and snakes, animals, the consumption and the processing of game, any equipment issues, and the upcoming videos. On my hunt, I went after impala, wildebeest, gemsbok, zebra, warthog, blessed buck, and of course kudu. So that's what I went after. So let's get started. All I can say about the flight is the obvious. It's a very long flight, uh, about 16 hours. Some of the folks that had connecting flights through Amsterdam or Frankfurt or Dubai, it is my understanding that they were flying 25 to 30 hours. So, they were a very long flight. The drive to the camp was not bad. That was only about four hours. And most of the drive was on paved roads. I would say probably the last hour or so were on gravel, dirt roads, and it was noisy and very dusty and bumpy, but that's to be expected on a safari. That's just part of the adventure. The people that we met in Africa were very cordial, very professional. The guides, the host, the trackers, the skinners, and the PHs were all very, very professional and they treat us very well. We met a great, group of, a great group of guys at the camp, as I previously mentioned, from Wisconsin, Minnesota, North Dakota, Texas, and Pennsylvania. And we shared some, some great times there. And it was, it was a really good adventure. I hope to hunt with them sometime in the future. Perhaps we can go to another part of the world. And I would certainly uh, look forward to that. As far as the weather, it was dry and sunny every day. No rain, it was just sun and very dry and the temperatures ranged between 39 and 70 degrees. This is the translation in Celsius. But as you can see, that's about a 30 degree temperature difference and it was very cold in the mornings and then as the day progressed it would get warmer and warmer and you'd have to shed those layers. When we were on the back of the Toyota Land Cruisers driving to our destination, it was very cold because we had that wind chill effect with the wind blowing on us. And the first two hours in the morning were really cold. And I would say probably by mid-morning you could start taking layers off. And by noon time, of course, you could hunt just in a long sleeve shirt. At least that's what I wore. So, you, of course, you could wear a short sleeve, but I wanted a little protection from the sun and the insects. So I just wore a long sleeve shirt. As far as the vegetation and the terrain, I can say that pretty much everything in Africa has thorns. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and the terrain was vast. We were on properties that were 30, 35, 40,000 acres. And 
it, it would basically be impossible to hunt it all in one day. You had to pick out a section and then we would scope out some animals and we were basically doing a spot and stalk. We would spot some animals, try to work an angle where we can get close enough to make a good shot or pick out a good bull. And that was really the game plan and working the wind. If the wind wasn't right, we would just do something else. But we didn't have any of those scent covers or um, anything to mask our scent. We just hunted the wind and we did some careful stalking and a lot, a lot, a lot of walking. So that was one thing that we did a lot of, it was walking. Insects and snakes, not really bad. I didn't think they were a big deal. There was more insects by the water, of course, but when we got inland, they didn't seem to be too bad, especially if we had a little bit of a breeze. And the snakes, there was uh, one gentleman saw a puffer, another gentleman saw a cobra, and I saw a pretty large black mamba up in the mountains when we were going after kudu. I think it would sun in itself on the rocks, warming its body temperature up, and we kind of spooked it. So we just gave it space, let it go on its way. You really don't want to mess around with a black mamba. And it went on its way, and we continued our hunt. We took precautions. You just got to watch where you step in the grass. We had gators, uh, brush pants, etc., etc., and you just take your time. The animals. Well, what I can say about the animals were they were very high quality. They were healthy. They were large and mature bulls on all the properties that we went to. And not only were the animals of high quality, but there was a large quantity of animals. There was a lot of animals. We saw animals all day long. It was just a matter of getting a good stalk, getting close enough, and picking out a mature bull. And that was basically the, the game plan as we were hunting each and every day. The consumption and processing of game. Well, for those of you that have never been to Africa, I can tell you that nothing is wasted in Africa. Everything is utilized. They take the carcass and they will skin it and the hunter can have the hide, of course, and the horns if he wants to do some sort of a mount. No problem there, of course they got to pay for it. The hoofs, the organs are utilized, they're eaten. The face meat, we saw people cutting away the face meat and taking that home for food. Uh, some of the meat was put into these giant uh, walk-in freezers and that is sold at market as bush meat. But I could tell you that really nothing was wasted. The only thing that was left over was a little bit of blood for the flies, and that was about it. It was a very, very efficient processing machine, and it was, it was a pleasure to watch these gentlemen work and break down these animals and consume everything that they had to offer. So these animals are a very valuable resource to them, and they utilized every part of that animal. As far as equipment issues, we did have some. One of the gentlemen that we were with actually walked out of his soles on his boots, and it was towards the end of the hunt, so he was okay, but the soles actually came off his boots, and it was a good thing it was near the end of the hunt because he would have pretty much been screwed without, uh, without boots. As for me, I had a couple minor issues with the GoPro. The battery consumption was the, the main issue for me because if I was using the remote with the Wi-Fi and had the LCD screen on and left the camera on standby, I was going through four batteries a day. So the battery consumption was a little bit of an issue. And the other issue that I had is with these casings, when I had the GoPro in there fully encased, the sound quality I found it to be very poor and substandard. And you'll notice that in some of the videos when I show them to you, when the gun goes off it sounds almost like a cap gun. And when we're talking it's very hard to hear. So that, that's one of the drawbacks I think with this uh, unit here is that, now I could have went with a skeletonized uh, housing of course, that would improve the sound quality substantially but then the camera would not be fully protected so I just decided to protect the camera because it's such an expensive piece of equipment 
but those were some of the issues I had with it. The other one was mounting it. I had it on my head and I got to tell you after five or six hours of this dig on your head it gets heavy. And I, I ended up making a shot and it was a good shot by the way. And it was, it was a little bit on the far side but I ended up hitting a wildebeest and the camera actually was on my head and it shifted after the shot so that shot's kind of blown a little bit because the camera shifted backwards and it's getting a lot of the sky as opposed to the actual walk up to the animal now I did film with this camera I did some close-up footage and that worked so I did have this camera with me to supplement it but as far as mounting I had it on my head I did not like it on the rifle I took it off I just didn't like the way that felt and I wore it on my chest the chest mount to me it was the most comfortable but of course that's going to block the shots so those were the issues that I had with the GoPro I do have footage on here I'm going to save it on my computer uh, it is what it is and I will share that with you and what I will say about this camera is it's a useful tool it has an application but there's absolutely no replacement for having a professional camera person with you following you around with the camera and recording all the footage doing the impact shots the wide angles and the close-ups to me a camera person is invaluable especially somebody that knows what they're doing but when you're a one-man show it is what it is now one of the other gentlemen that was with us had an issue with his scope where the actual reticle moved it shifted within the scope and he had a really difficult time when he was out in the field uh, hitting some animals. Now I believe he went back to camp and either borrowed a rifle or rented a rifle and that was how he was able to rectify that but the radical actually shifted within the scope and he was pretty much um, you know that that rifle became useless while he was there. So that's pretty much on the equipment issues. The upcoming videos are going to cover an Impala, Wilderbeast, Gemsbach, Zebra, Warthog, Bless buck and a kudu hunt. Um, I got all my animals. I think everyone else did too as well, plus some. And we had a great time there. Now, I, I will say that if you're not a hunter, these videos may not be suited for you, uh, especially if you're a miner or those that might be sensitive to blood. So I want to be upfront with you. Uh, give you fair warning viewer discretion is advised so if you don't think uh, these videos are for you simply click off and you know watch something else but there is going to be blood in these videos and there's going to be some close-up shots where we're walking up with the camera and you can actually see the animal bleeding so I apologize for that but that's the way it is this is actual hunting I hope everyone is enjoying their summer I want to thank everyone for tuning in Thank you kindly and see you all next time.